Hello and welcome to The Main Cave. Now in today's video, I'm going to be going through what I believe is a strong contender for a mouse that you should buy as your very first gaming mouse. But first, a quick disclaimer. Now today I'm going to be looking at this, the Keychron M3 gaming mouse, and I will go through in detail the unboxing, the price, the build quality and size, the buttons, the specification, features and connections, the software, shape and comfort, and what I didn't like about this mouse after weeks of use. So at this point, I will assume you own a gaming PC and your next big decision for you is to get a mouse and a keyboard. Now, if you've trawled through Amazon, YouTube and Google looking for the best mouse and keyboard, you'll see that there are hundreds of options, all different sizes, weights, and importantly, the price. Some mice come in excess of £150 or dollars, and that's a lot for one that you don't know you'll get on with once you've bought it. So that's where this mouse comes in. So for price, there's some good news and there's some bad news. So I paid £49 direct from Keychron. It's also $49 in the US. Now that's the main reason why I got this. It is a perfect price for a mouse that has all the qualities that I'll go through in this video but it's not too expensive to have to worry about it being perfect. Although, pretty much is apart from a few issues. So under £50 or $50 is a great price, but as I said, I ordered this from the UK version of the Keychron website, and I had to pay £7.20 postage. That's 14% of the total price just on postage, and it took nine days to arrive. In a world of logistics and getting things next day for free, I did feel a little bit cheated, but that's the way it goes. And even at £56.20, it does feel like a bargain. So the unboxing was surprisingly premium. It's a decent feeling box with very good foam protection inside housing the mouse itself. You also get a plethora of accessories, including a nicely braided USB-C to USB-C cable, two adapters, one USB-C female to USB male, and the other being USB-C female to USB female. You also get not one, but two 2.4 dongles, one USB and one USB-C. You basically have all the bases covered no matter what your port is free on your PC. And finally, you get an instruction manual explaining the basics. The first time you pull the mouse out, it becomes clear that this is no small mouse. I have an average sized adult hands and I feel like this mouse fits me perfectly. If you have small hands, you may feel that this is a bit too big for you, but it's not unusable as my kids didn't have a problem with it. Although it is personal preference as to whether you want to go for a specifically designed smaller mouse or not. When you first put your hand on them, you'll feel the hump. It's right up there, literally. I measured all of my other mouse and here are the results of the heights of the hump alone from the desk to the maximum height. As you can see, it's at the top of that list in terms of height. I will talk about comfort later on, but this will have all of the grip styles in it. I'm fingertip and found this to be great. It weighs 78 grams, it's 12.5 centimeters long, 6.4 centimeters at the front, six centimeters in the middle, up to 6.8 centimeters to the rear. The main clicks are 6.5 centimeters at the longest and 2.5 centimeters wide. It's all over matte plastic and I went for the black simply because the white version was out of stock. And when the mouse is powered off, it's black all over, but turn it on and you'll see that a long RGB strip running from the sides all the way around the back. On the top is the two main clicks, the scroll wheel, which also lights up, the central top button, which out of the box controls the RGB, but you'll see later on in the software that this can be changed. On the left side as the standard two buttons and you'll see that there is a textured part either side to help with grip. This is exactly the same material as the plastic shell, it's just textured a bit to help with that grip. On the bottom are two buttons flanking a mode selector switch. The left button controls the DPI, the right button the report rate, and the middle switch is turning on or off to either connect to Bluetooth or via the 2.4 dongle. Top and the bottom of the rear are the three skates, one large and two smaller. Then on the front is the USB-C port and that is the only way to be able to charge the mouse. So let's talk about the buttons then. As we've seen, there are six assignable buttons. To assign these, you need to use the software, which I'll talk about later, but let's concentrate on how they sound and feel. The two main clicks are okay. They're not too bad, but they're not great. I found them to have a touch more post-travel than most. 
Don't let that put you off though. I have a plethora of mouse that I'm comparing this to and in isolation, I wouldn't really have had an issue. But there is about one millimeter of pre-travel and then when it clicks, there's about two millimeters and in conjunction with a slightly softer click, it does feel a bit spongy. But as I said, it's not too bad as some other mice that I've used at twice the price. So here's what they both sound like. They use the CalGM 8.0 micro switch and on the website state that they are good for around 80 million clicks. The scroll wheel button is a lovely click with no pre or post travel and the sounds identical to the main clicks. The button behind the scroll wheel is a short, almost silent click and really is used for functionality more than gaming. Then onto the side with the two thumb buttons. These have a shiny finish and shaped contour the top of the mouse. Again, they sound and feel identical to the main clicks. They do protrude enough to fill them without getting in the way when gaming, I have no problem hitting either of them without having to adjust my grip. The scroll wheel is pretty much what you'd expect, offers a slight resistance to scrolling and has a nice tactile feedback. It's coated in a rubber material which helps with the grip. So it all seems so good so far. So let's look at the specification. The main takeaway that this has a DPI of up to 26,000, 650 IPS, using the poor 3395 sensor. It's wired, 2.4 or Bluetooth connection, has RGB, 1000 polling rate, 70 hour battery, that's with RGB off or 15 with RGB on, and around two and a half hours charge time, 50G acceleration, and connect to Windows or the Mac. All these stats combined make for a few really nice features. Out of the box, without using the software, the button on the top controls the RGB, which is a really nice addition. On the bottom, you can change the DPI, and I love that above it, there are five small LEDs indicating which DPI you are currently on. They're also color coded to make it super easy to tell at a glance. I love this, white, green, blue, orange, and red. Then on the other side is the report rate, which can be set in the software, but again, LEDs above it are the switch to tell you which you're on, white, blue, and red. Personally, I'll leave the report rate on the highest, which is 125 for Bluetooth, but 1000 when using the dongle. And I only really ever change DPI every so often. But having the LEDs above really help change it quickly, or just to check what you're on if you've been killed and you want something to blame. As I've said, there are three types of connection, 2.4 dongle, Bluetooth, and wired. Take your pick really, but if you are gaming online, then you need to be choosing wired or 2.4. For me, I tested both ways and with the 1000 polling rate, I couldn't really tell the difference much between that and wired. But you won't want to play this using Bluetooth. The polling rate is so low, it shouldn't be used for online gaming. Just stick to general PC use with Bluetooth if you need to. The cable it comes with is okay, it's 1.8 meters long and it does feel a bit thin, but it is nicely braided. It's USB-C to USB-C in addition with the adapter, it covers every base for connecting to your PC. One really, really small thing, but it's the kind of thing that I notice, is that all the connections and adapters have a rounded edged feeling, apart from the USB to USB-C adapter, which is squared off. If you can tell me why this is, then please let me know down in the comments below. It's just one of these things that I've noticed. Now onto another large part of why this mouse offers really great value, and that is the software. It pretty much has everything that you'd expect from a mouse. So download the software from the website, open it up and connect your mouse. You can set all the functions using wireless, so you no need to plug it in with a cable. At the bottom left is the profiles of which you can have five. I haven't found a way yet of being able to swap the profiles on the mouse, but so I'm not sure if that's a feature or not. So at the moment, I'm having to change the profiles in the software on its own. On the left is the menu and at the top is the home button, then the buttons, pointer settings, macro editor, RGB and finally mouse settings. Bottom right is also settings, but apart from locking the left click language and restoring the mouse, this is all about just the information. So back up to buttons here and you have to change any of the six buttons or the scroll wheel to a bunch of different functions. So for each button, they have split it into what is up to nine categories, mouse features, sensitivity, multimedia, macro, system shortcuts, RGB control, keyboard, game enhancements and disable key. So select the button you want to change and pick what you want it to do. For example here, I will change the top button from RGB control to my computer. 
No need to save it, just hit the button and it's changed. For each category, there are several functions, so you can pretty much do whatever you want with all of the buttons. Next down is the pointer settings. Here you can set your five levels of DPI, again, all color coded, then the report rate. Next is macro editor, and this is something I've not really used as much as I'd like, but it's got everything you'd expect. You can be able to import macros if you have access to them. Next down is the RGB, and this is just you selecting one of the presets. And on the case of say static, you can also select the color that you like. I always leave mine on a rainbow swirl, then just adjust the speed and the brightness, all of which will change on the mouse immediately. Finally, there's another settings here where you can change the lift off distance, one or two millimeters, the ripple, angle snap, and motion sync on and off, scroll direction, debounce time, and the Windows system settings. As I said earlier, the software has you covered in every department. There's loads to adjust and change. It is fantastic. So how does it feel when playing then? As I alluded to earlier, the mouse fitted in my hand perfectly. The shape is one of those such as the Glorious O and the Razor Viper Ultimate. The large rear helps my palm rest and with enough grip between my little finger and the thumb for movements without slipping all the need for grip tape. I use the fingertip grip, but I tried using the palm and the claw and it all seemed to be able to control enough of the mouse to be effective, but I'm no expert in these grips as I only use fingertip. The buttons are gently sloped outwards with no indentation to help your fingers locate the center of the buttons, but that's fine. The skates on the bottom do a good job of sliding around my mouse mat and I'll be on the lookout for some glass skates just to give it extra as I've been spoiled with my GPX and the upgraded skates on that. For me, the weight is near to the top end of what you'd call a light mouse. 78 grams is light enough to spin around, but heavy enough to get some feedback when pushing it around. It really does feel great. The combination of physical features and the software inside makes for a great experience. Hitting targets with ease, scoping and shooting was fine. As with all mouse, this single mouse isn't going to make you a pro overnight, but it does help in giving you an enjoyable, comfortable experience when playing. So what don't I like about this? Well, after a few weeks of playing, I can't really find much I don't like. However, there may be a few things you don't like about it, and that's why I need you to comment to let me know. Are the mouse clicks too loud for you? Is the RGB pointless? Is it too heavy for you? Let me know. For me, this mouse is a definite contender for your very first gaming mouse, or as a spare mouse, simply due to its £49 or $49 price tag. It's almost a no risk purchase, especially compared to other mice over twice the price when you may or may not enjoy using it. So let me know then what you think of this mouse. I've linked links down below of where you can purchase it from the official website, the links below. Are there any other mouse in the $50 category that you'd recommend in comparison to this one? Let me know down in the comments below. So let me know what you think. Please do like, please do subscribe for more tech and gaming videos. Until the next one, bye bye.